Welcome, Carbon Nation. We're glad to have you with us today. We feel like we've got a pretty worthwhile program for you today. We're going to talk about something that 10 or 20 years ago we probably would not have discussed as it pertains to modern rifles. We're going to talk about muzzle brakes and muzzle devices, especially as they pertain to the rifles that we sell at Christensen Arms. One of the great things about a muzzle brake right now is, like we mentioned 10 or 20 years ago, an old Winchester Model 943030 was not threaded at the muzzle. Muzzle devices has really become an issue or very important to buyers just in the last 10 years or so. Muzzle threads are now a popular, almost a required part of every barrel manufacturer. You almost have to have a threaded muzzle on your rifles. And part of the reason for that is that makes them available to be a host for a suppressor. So between the ability to have a muzzle brake on and the ability to run a suppressor on that same barrel, muzzle threads are, are a feature now of almost every single rifle that's made. Like we mentioned 10 or 20 years ago, the rifles we made either did not have muzzle threads on them or if they did, they were a thread pattern that was not in an industry standard. For example, if you've got one of our old, old rifles, 12, 14, 16 years old, <clears throat> the muzzle threads on that rifle will be a 9 16 28. It wasn't until about 10 years ago that the industry adopted the standards of 5 8 24 and half 28 as far as threaded muzzles go. And that allows for interchangeability of different brands of muzzle brakes and also suppressors. And so that's why we hear a lot more now about threaded barrels and muzzle devices than we did in the past. So that's that's one reason why there's a lot more now than there was in the in the past slide. What is a muzzle brake and how does it work? That's a really, really good question, and it's one we hear at the factory quite a bit. A muzzle brake is just like the name implies. It's a B-R-A-K-E, as in slow down or stop. The muzzle brake itself, there, there's a few different ways that you can that you can come up with a muzzle brake, and the muzzle brakes by design or reduce felt recoil to the shooter by redirecting gases as they leave the as the bullet leaves the muzzle of the rifle. So a muzzle brake does a few things for you. It has the potential to significantly reduce felt recoil to the shooter, and it has the potential too to reduce muzzle rise. Why muzzle rise in a rifle? We get that asked that question a lot. Part of the reason for that is the line, the axis of the barrel is typically above where the shooter's shoulder contacts the recoil pad. And because this line is above this line, when the rifle goes off and comes back into the shooter with the barrel being higher than the shoulder contact, there's a slight tendency for the muzzle to rise on the gun. And we can help mitigate that a little bit to a certain degree by the proper muzzle device. And so in Christensen Arms, we run a few different muzzle devices. I've got some examples of those here. I've got an example of our side port brake with the four Allen head set screws in it, and then one of our standard 360 radial brakes. Uh, let's talk about maybe the, the advantages of each of the different brakes. When we talk about a side port brake, we mean exactly like we say. The ports that redirect the gas is done on the side of the, of the muzzle brake. There's a few different names for this brake, but we call it our side port brake. The side port brake is a standard muzzle brake on all of our firearms that are designed with the intended purpose of long range precision shooting, bench shooting, or something like that. So obviously the modern precision rifle is gonna be a candidate for that side port brake. Whereas our ridgeline rifle, which is primarily designed as a hunting rifle, it will ship with our standard 360 radial brake. So what are, the, what are the disadvantages of using a muzzle brake? The single biggest disadvantage of a muzzle brake is the, the, the significant increase in decibel level to the shooter. In other words, the, the, the loudness, the sound that you hear that affects your hearing is significantly larger using a brake than it was before. If you use a brake, this redirection of the combusted gases of, that are pushing the bullet down the barrel are redirected back to you as the shooter. And so decibel levels increase dramatically. 
one of the most significant things you need to make sure that you do as you have a break on your firearm is ensure that not only you, but other fellow shooters are absolutely hearing protected. In fact, when I shoot a side port break on the firing line, I would absolutely recommend hearing protection in your ears and then perhaps muffs if you have both to protect you. Otherwise, the decibel levels that you're, that you're uh, exposed to could overcome one of those two and maybe even bother your hearing a little bit. So I recommend double ears if you're using a side port break. Side port breaks tend to sound a little louder than a 360 radio break because they concentrate the redirected gases immediately to your left and right. Whereas the radial break spreads that pressure 360 degrees radially. And so that's the, that's the difference in how the gases are redirected. What are some of the advantages of a side port break then? Obviously, if we ship the 360 radial break on our hunting rifles, that break is primarily designed to shoot in a standing or a sitting position. It uh, is a little more forgiving on the ears, but it does distribute that redirected combusted gases 360 degrees radially. So if you're on the ground, if you're prone or on a bench, a lot of that pressure goes down and hits the ground or the bench right in front of you. Whereas the side port brake is closed on the bottom and redirects all that gas to the sides, making it a lot more suitable for shooting close to the ground. The other advantage to our side port brake, and I've got one right here, is uh, we have four Allen head set screws in the top of the brake. Those Allen head set screws allow a couple of different things. <clears throat> it gives you some tunability in your muzzle brake. <clears throat> As you remove one or more of those Allen head set screws, you change the mass of the muzzle device, thereby influencing the harmonics of the barrel as you shoot. We've had a lot of shooters that have had very good success with one or more of those Allen head set screws removed and they be become more accurate with their firearm. Me, I just usually leave all four of mine in. The other thing we've found is, as you remove one or more of those Allen head set screws, you allow pressure as the bullet exits the muzzle and then consequently the brake. Pressure is allowed to come up through those holes where the Allen head set screw is. And as you allow pressure to escape at 12 o'clock or straight up on your muzzle brake, you introduce the possibility or the potential of decreased muzzle rise. Now with that advantage comes a disadvantage. If you're engaged in the long range target and as a shooter, you're trying to call your own shots and watch your own bullet trace. Obviously, if those Allen head set screws are out, it allows pressure to go up. And in many cases, as you try to call your own shot or see your own bullet trace, that gas coming straight up out of your muzzle brake <clears throat> will obscure your ability to see your own bullet trace. So those are some considerations with those brakes. The advantages. The radial brake does not require a, a, a crush washer to properly time it because it's 360 radial and wherever that muzzle brake tightens on the end of the barrel is adequate. It does not need to be a specifically oriented brake. Whereas a side port brake needs to be indexed or clocked, clocked so that the Allen head set screws are at 12 o'clock. Well, how do we accomplish that? There's a couple of different ways you can do that. One of them is a shim kit. And I own a couple of shim kits and they work well. They consist of a set of shims of different width thicknesses. And you just stack a shim or two on the end of your barrel and you find the right thickness of shims that allows your, your side port brake to final tighten at 12 o'clock. The easiest way, the least expensive way to properly index that brake is by using a crush washer. The crush washer by design has to be softer than the 416R stainless of the barrel or the brake. And so that crush washer, what it allows you to do, as the name implies, is that washer is designed to crush as you tighten your brake on. And so this is what it looks like. If you have one of our side port brakes, you can put a 15 16 deep socket on that brake and tighten it onto the muzzle threads. You orient the aluminum crush washer with the cup or the tapered side toward the brake. In other words, the crush washer will look a little bit like a bowl as you hold it in your hand. There will be one side that points up and the other side that points down. You want to orient the cup side or the angled side toward the brake. So the, the side that points toward the brake will help center the brake as you tighten that brake on your threads. You don't want to put the pointed side of the brake back toward the, the, the barrel because that will disallow that 
tapered portion to help guide the brake onto the threads the way it should. So you put the pointed side toward the brake and tighten. And initially, when the brake makes contact with the aluminum crush washer, you then start to monitor the orientation of the Allen head set screws. And as they come up around on that next rotation, the 12 o'clock, that will orient the brake properly and that aluminum crush washer will make sure that it stays tight. Now, a disadvantage of the crush washer, it's typically a one or a two time use washer. Once you crush that washer once or twice sometimes, then it will no longer allow you to properly orient your brake. So if you take your brake off often to, to clean the crown and to, and to clean the brake, you'll want to have a supply of crush washers on hand. We have those available right on our web store. So, And it's just a standard 5 8 24 crush washer. So if it's a 5 8 ID and about a 0 .80 out outside diameter, it'll work with our brakes. But like I said, we sell them too. The other disadvantage to a crush washer, <clears throat> every once in a while we have shooters who remove a side port brake from their firearm, but they neglect to remove the crush washer that was used to install that side port brake, and they leave it on their muzzle threads as they suppress. It is very, very important from a safety perspective. You have got to be sure that you remove that aluminum crush washer from the muzzle threads so that you adapt your suppressor, whether it's a QD muzzle device or the suppressor itself, it's got to be mounted to your barrel with no other, with just direct threads, no crush washer on there. That could result in a baffle strike or not being properly aligned in your suppressor application. So please, if you take a side port brake off of a rifle, anybody's rifle, make certain you remove the aluminum crush washer too before you install your suppressor. So that kind of gives you an idea of the different suppressors we have. In addition to suppressors, as you buy our guns, you'll notice that they come with a crush with the uh, stainless steel thread protector. We have them in all different colors. We offer black for the MPRs. We offer a burnt bronze version for the Ridge line in burnt bronze, and then the standard stainless steel thread protector. We offer those. In fact, they ship with uh, all of the all of the radial brake firearms. So. The, the ridge line will ship with a radial brake and a stainless steel thread protector. Now, if you buy a firearm like this NPR that ships with a side port brake, we do not ship a thread protector with that firearm, but you can buy one on our web store. Let's talk a little bit now. Just I know there's a lot of people out there that own a Mesa and a Mesa long range. We have not forgotten about those rifles. They too are threaded at the muzzle. I've got a little, a little. Uh, Mesa TI here. As you can see, the muzzle brake is removable. It is one of our 360 radial brakes, so it does a very good job of minimizing felt recoil. But should you decide you want to suppress your Mesa or Mesa long range, the muzzle brake is removable. Even if it seems like it's not, it certainly is. You can remove that muzzle brake and install a thread, pro or a thread protector or a suppressor to all of those steel barreled guns. Uh, on this Mesa rifle, instead of a 5H24 muzzle thread, the Mesa rifle in this barrel contour will have a half 28. Again, those are the two standard muzzle threads right now, half 28 and 5H24. So even our even our uh, uh, Mesa rifles are capable of running a suppressor. We've been asked a lot of times as we go to remove that suppressor, how do we remove it? Essentially, what you want to do is locate on the Mesa rifle the brake between the muzzle brake itself and the barrel. Score the Cerakote with a razor and then just spin it off. It's fairly simple and straightforward. While we're talking about suppressing and <coughs> muzzle brakes and thread protectors, let's talk about the Ranger. And it's important if you own a Ranger to understand what's going on with that little gun. We do make the Ranger so that it can be suppressed. In fact, what we've done, we get a phone call every now and then that says the threads are too long for my suppressor. What that means is we made the threads at the muzzle of the Ranger 22 rifle to accept both uh, 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 22 rim fire suppressor and also a, a, a center fire suppressor. So the threads as they are are too long for a rim fire suppressor. If you're going to suppress a Ranger 22 with a standard 22 suppressor, you'll need to buy a spacer that will space those threads out so you can run the rim fire. 
So they're designed for a center fire, but you can absolutely run a rim fire suppressor. I do it myself. You can run a rim fire suppressor on there. Uh, you just have to buy a, a, a little spacer. Silencer Co. and a few of the other companies sell a spacer that will allow you to space those threads out so that you can run a rim fire suppressor on the Ranger 22. But again, muzzle threads on everything we do. Let's back up the seven. So we've talked a little bit about moving, removing the Mesa brake and the Mesa long range brake. Let me just mention to you, please, if you've got a Mesa rifle and you want a thread protector for that rifle, you've decided you want to remove the brake because it's loud and you want to remove that, that radial brake, we do offer, if there wasn't a thread protector shipped to you with your Mesa rifle, please call us at the factory line and we will explain to you how you can get a black knurled steel thread protector that will work for your Mesa rifle. So we want to make sure everybody's aware of that. We would love to have you, if you don't want to run the brake on there, we'd love to have you have a thread protector so that you can run that without damaging your threads. So great point, and I'm glad we were reminded of that. So so we've talked about basically uh, the muzzle brakes to this point. Let's see. We, so let's talk about the caliber of muzzle brake you need for your application and the thread pitch. We've mentioned already that 5 8 24 on the carbon barreled guns and 1 half by 28 on the rim fire and even the 223 caliber guns. For example, the, the modern precision rifle chambered in 223 will have a half 28 muzzle thread on it. Both of those threads are widely adaptable for modern suppressors. If you've got a 5 8 24 suppressor, you can easily buy adapter to adapt you down to the half by 28 threads so that you can run a suppressor regardless of those two thread patterns. As far as caliber goes, at Christensen Arms, we've done a ton of research, and what you'll find is everything that's above 22 caliber, that includes the 243, 264, and 284 calibers, or the 6.5 and the 7mm and the 8mm, they will all work with a, with a point, with a 30 caliber uh, break. The 30 caliber break for us covers every application above 22 caliber. And then we do offer a 22 caliber break. This break right here in my hand is a half 28 thread stainless steel radial break in 22 caliber. So in a lot of this stuff we offer on the web store, we offer the thread protector, the crush washers, and basically everything we're talking about is available right on the web store. As we discuss muzzle brakes and muzzle devices, uh, one of the important questions for us to answer for you is when we do a barrel length, if we advertise a 24-inch barrel at Christensen Arms, are we in fact including the inch and a half added by that muzzle brake when we mention a barrel length? And the answer to that question is no. All of our barrel lengths are done, are listed, without calculating the additional length of a muzzle brake. So whatever our barrel lengths are, depending on what brake you're gonna ship with that gun or install on that gun, you need to add about an inch and a half as far as overall length goes in addition to what we advertise. Because when we list a barrel length, we do not list that barrel length with the addition of the, with the, with the brake installed. And typically, like I mentioned, it's about one and a half inches of additional length. That can make a difference when you're looking for a rifle case or something. So. Muzzle brakes, they're great. In fact, I'll be honest with you, uh, one of the great things about muzzle brakes as they reduce felt recoil to the shooter and suppressors is typically they allow a lot of shooters to shoot better than they do unsuppressed or without a muzzle brake. I've noticed even myself sometimes if I'm shooting a large caliber rifle and I've got a really good muzzle brake on there and it minimizes the violence to the shoulder, if felt recoil is less of an issue, I tend to be able to concentrate a little bit better on accuracy. Uh, I, I'm sure we're all we're all experienced with some recoil. Some of us handle it better than others, but typically, when there's less felt recoil to the shooter, we're able to shoot a little bit more effectively. Same thing with noise as a suppressor. I've noticed a lot of even my own family and myself in some occasions. If you put a suppressor on, it just seems like it's a little easier to concentrate on all the fundamentals of accuracy and then maybe improving your groups based on having those two muzzle devices on there. 
But uh, gosh, Grandpa didn't have a suppressor or a muzzle brake, and he shot pretty well too. So there are some disadvantages to the muzzle brakes. They are very, very loud, and we would just mention again, anytime you or anyone around you shoot with a muzzle brake on a firearm, please be conscious of the increased need for hearing protection. It is an absolute must. If you shot a, a, a rifle with a side port brake on it, much at all, you could easily cause some hearing damage that would not go away. And so it's very, very important to realize what you're doing. In fact, in a lot of African countries, if you're there with PHs or whatever, it, you are not allowed to even have a muzzle brake on your firearm for that reason, just because there isn't always time for everybody to get hearing protection on. So it, 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 it increases the need for hearing protection and it decreases the need to be worried about a lot of felt recoil. They're a part of life. They're going to be with us forever. We're proud to offer all the products that we do. Uh, as far as the, the amount of reduced felt recoil to the shooters, there are, in the industry, there's everything from 10% to 50%. Ours are in the middle there somewhere. I would, uh, it's fair to say that our muzzle brakes are effective enough to be 30 to 40% reduction in felt recoil to the shooter. A couple of things influence that. If you're shooting a 140 grain bullet at 2,700 feet per second, the muzzle brake won't be quite as much of a factor as it would if you're shooting a 220 grain 30 caliber slug at 3,100 feet per second. The brake will work better on that heavier, faster bullet than it will that slower, heavier, slower, lighter bullet. So the degree to which the muzzle brake helps recoil varies on the ammunition caliber, all of those variables. But in any event, you can figure on about 30 to 40 percent reduction in felt recoil. By way of a hint, a lot of us here at the factory, we put our brakes on in the summer when we're doing all of our range work, as we're doing load development or whatever, we'll shoot with that brake on all through the summer with our hearing protection. And then when we go on the mountain to hunt, we remove the brake, install a thread protector, we adjust for shift in point of impact, and we hunt with that thread protector and not a muzzle brake for the hunt, and then come home and convert back. So. That's something that's worked well for us. We would recommend that to you. Consider it. If it works for you, great. If not, do what works for you. <clears throat> we appreciate your involvement. At Christians and Arms, we take a lot of pride in the products we offer, how they're designed, and how they work. Behind those products is a company committed to supporting you, our customers, and our dealers. If you have any questions at all about anything we've talked about today, you're welcome to email me or call the factory. We have a great customer service staff. They can answer questions or refer your questions to somebody that can answer them for you. We would love to support you so that you can have the best shooting experience that, that you're possible to have. As we always say, we'd love for you to shoot a lot, shoot often. We obviously want you to shoot safely. And in addition to that, consider involving some younger shooters in the sport. With muzzle brakes, it makes it a little easier to shoot a firearm and not have an unpleasant felt recoil experience. And so take those younger shooters out, get them involved with the appropriate caliber, and they'll have a great time too. So again, everybody, we appreciate you being Carbon Nation. We hope you've enjoyed today's program and hopefully some of what we talked about will help you. In the meantime, thanks everybody. Take care.